Okay, in this problem, we are given formulas, and we're told that these formulas give us the volume of some shape. Our goal is to figure out, well, what shape are we calculating here? What shape are we finding the volume for, the volume for in each case? And we can assume that it's either some type of prism, sphere, cone, uh, or cylinder, because that's what we're working with in this unit. So those are our limitations. With that in mind, what must these be? Well, I know this first equation can't be a cylinder or a sphere or a cone because it has nothing to do with pi. So it's some type of prism. And I think the most reasonable assumption is that this is a rectangular prism, right, with a, maybe a width of 2 and 2 thirds, a length of 4 and 4 fifths, and a height of 3 and 7 eighths. I guess this could be another prism. Um, I, I mean, I, I think here that this makes the most sense because it's not like you have the area of a base. right? We know we have three dimensions. But it may be possible, I'm not sure, if this could be another prism, but I think this is certainly the most reasonable to assume that this is the length, width, and height of a rectangular prism. So they want us to sketch this out. Um, and to do that, and to actually find the volume as well, to do that, I'm going to convert all these to improper fractions. I just... I find it easier. So here I'm going to multiply 3 by 2, get 6, add 2, 8 thirds, nice shortcut there, times, I'm going to write it with parentheses, well 5 times 4 is 20, plus 4, 24 fifths, and then we're going to multiply that, well 8 times 3 is 24, plus 7, 31 eighths. So that'll help us find the volume here, um, and, and I guess I should tell you that Mainly the reason why is because we do some canceling out. You can think that eventually 8 will be divided by 8, so those cancel out. And that 3 goes into 24 8 times. So now we have a much simpler problem to deal with, right? A little cross cancellation there, which I just love. Um, so anyway, now we have a simpler problem. 8 times 31 divided by 5. So let's work through that quickly. 8 times 31, right? 248 divided by 5. 49.6. So I'm going to write 49.6 is like 49 and, and 6 tenths, right? 0. 0.6. But we can reduce that. Um, divide 6 and 10 by 2. We get 3 fifths. So 49 and 3 fifths. That's the volume of this shape. But what would it look like? Well, rectangular prisms, of course, right, are made of rectangular faces. So here the height is the longest side here that I assigned was the length, and the width is it's pretty skinny rectangle. So I say this is two and two thirds, almost three, then up almost four, right? And then we have another one of these right here. Connect them. You can see the length is, I think, the longest side for sure. Might look something like this. So we have here's our width of two and two thirds. And our length is four and four fifths. Should be the longest looking side. It might not look the longest. Uh, the way I drew it. Sorry about that. Um, and then the height should be three and seven eighths, almost four. That's the height. So when you're when you're sketching this out, make sure the length, especially on a, a test or something that you're being graded, is certainly longer. I, I probably should extend it a little bit more than I have it here. But that's basically how this one might look. The next formula has a pi constant in it, and so is the one after that. So it tells me it's either a sphere, it's a cone, or it's some kind of cylinder. And I think here I, I can almost see the formula, right, for the cylinder volume. It's pi times the radius squared, so this is the radius, 2.2, .2, times the height right here, so that's the height, right? You can almost see this formula, it connects right into it. So the first one that we did was a rectangular prism. But now that we're dealing with, with pi, Right? You know it has something to do with curvature. So here um, we have a cylinder. And we can find the volume, right? 2.2 squared times 6.5 times pi. And 2.2 times 2.2, that's 2.2 squared. 4.84 times 6.5, well, that's 31.46. So 31.46 times pi. And... Here, we can leave it in terms of pi, or you might be asked to estimate pi to some amount. I'm going to 
estimated to a whole number. So this times 3. We get 94.38. So this is about 94. Point, excuse me, 38 cubic something units. And we should sketch the cylinder out. Uh, the height here is 6.5, is the longest side of the cylinder. Right, so our height is on both sides. And then our base right, has a radius of 2.2 .2 here. So we want to label that radius equals oops, radius equals 2.2. .2. I'll label it outside the cylinder. Um, radius equals 2.2. .2. And the height right here, this is our height, is 6.5. And that's the cylinder that we're working with. That's our cylinder. The last formula here also deals with pi, but the one-third tells me that this is a cone. Because a cone, if you remember, like in this cylinder right here, imagine I drew a cone right inside this cylinder. Maybe it's an ice cream cone, who knows? But the, the cone is in here, right? The question is, well, how does the cone relate to a cylinder? Well, it takes three cones to fill a cylinder that has the same radius and height. So here, I know that what we're really doing is taking pi times the radius squared times the height, right? Which is the formula for a um, the volume of a cylinder, which we just did, and then multiplying all that by a third. So we're we're basically taking a, a cylinder, cutting it in three pieces, and those pieces are the cone. So this is a cone, and um, the height of the cone is is not going to fit in the cylinder. The height's ten, but uh, we still get the basic idea. So here's our cone, right? much taller height, although it doesn't look comparatively taller, I don't think. The height of it, you might label right here, right up into the center of the top. And that height is 10. And the radius you can label right here or whatever, the radius is 4.25. And to find the volume, we just start multiplying. So we have 4.25 squared, so 4.25 times itself. 18.0625, but then we're multiplying that by 10, 180.625, so 180.625, right? And that's just this part. Now we want to find a third and then multiply it by pi. So I'm going to actually write like this, times pi over 3. That's, that means to find a third, I'm going to divide by 3. <coughs> so here, Take this number and divide it by 3. We get 60.208 and then 3 repeating. So, <coughs> excuse me, 60.208 and then repeating 3 times pi. Now, as a volume here, just like before, we can leave it times pi or in terms of pi for this volume of the cone. Or we can estimate that, that and say that pi is about 3 or 3.14 or whatever. I'm going to estimate it to 3, so triple this. And there's our volume. Um, 180, and actually, I'm sorry, that makes sense, right? 180.625, because I divided by 3 and multiplied by 3, essentially is what I'm doing when I estimated pi to 3. So I should just get this number right here. Take this number, divide it by 3, <coughs> multiply by 3, and you haven't really changed anything. So my estimation here ends up being 180.625 cubic something. We don't know the units. Anyway, I hope this helped. Um, I like this problem. You start with the formulas and then figure out what shape it applies to. Thanks.